So hello everyone, uh, I'm Xiao Chang Peng from University of Rochester and uh, this work is, uh, is mainly about uh, introducing semantic role information into machine uh, tree to string to tree machine trans translation to improve machine translation quality and uh, the first author has uh, graduated so I'm here to present this paper on, be on behalf of her. So. Uh, so semantics have already been proven to be useful in to improve machine translation quality, and uh, so we have. So here we want to uh, apply um, to apply semantic roles information into our uh, string to tree translation translation system, and uh, here we uh, major apply two kinds of features. First, we want to translate with some kind of complete semantic structures. So that, that intuition is kind of whenever we translate uh, uh, a sentence, if we translate a pred predicate, I want to incorporate all the uh, like co-arguments of the, that predicate into our translation. And another intuition is to use, to make sure that the semantic roles in our translation are all in the correct order. So we, we apply a, a certain uh, strategy uh, we, say, um, we define as semantic language model. That is just, just work, um, works as the normal language model. So our baseline system is a string translation system. We translate sentence to syntax trees. And uh, we use uh, synchronous context free grammars uh, extracted using sender JHKM um, extraction, uh, extraction strategy. And uh, here is one example of JHKM rule. So here it has a source site and a, a tree site. The tree site is a fragment of the original tree and uh, the string site is some, is some span from the, of the original string. So we abstract away all the internal nodes in the uh, graph si in the tree side. So we finally we get a rule like this. So all the internal uh, non-terminals are abstracted away. So as for decoding, we use uh, standard CYK style parsing. And uh, I think you, you guys are all familiar with this. So, um, so as for semantic role labeling, we use two kinds of uh, semantic role labels. The first one is prop bank. So prop bank has more generic semantic roles labels. It's just like arc zero, arc one, so it's arc plus an index. And, and uh, here is one example. What flights go from Seattle to Boston by Minneapolis? So the predicates go, and uh, there are some arguments of it, like flights, Seattle, Boston, which is arc plus some index which we call as core arguments. Another type of uh, uh, semantic roles are argm local, which we call as non-core arguments. So uh, in, the, in the next few slides, I will differentiate between these two. So uh, another kind of semantic role labels is verbnet. So verbnet annotates verbs with semantic roles. So the semantic roles have more specific denotation so one example is here. He came from France to Colorado. The predicate is came, and we have more specific semantic roles like the scene, source, destination of this event. So um, we use a semantic role labeler, which is trained on annotated corpus. And for prop bank, we use just an annotated part from the pantry bank. And uh, for verbnet, we use some some mappings from the annotations in the prop bank to, to verbnet labels using, a, using, using the result of sending project. So for target size semantic row label, labels, we just attach the semantic rows to each non-terminal in the target trees. 
As for source size semantic row label, labeling, we specify the span. So we just attach the semantic row to each span in the, in the string. So here is one uh, target side tree after semantic row labeling. We can see that the predicate is attached to VBG and the uh, arc zero is attached to the uh, non phrase and uh, we can see arc one there. So all the translation rules are extracted using the annotated parallel corpus. So uh, as for source size semantic row labeling, uh, we want to, our intuition is to encourage the decoder to generate all the essential uh, semantic rows. So we want to extract some complete semantic row, rules. So for each predicate, I want to uh, translate all of its core arguments. So we, we also extract normal JHKM rules separately as a baseline, and we add additional binary feature to separate these uh, special complete rules um, to differentiate between these two. So for target side rule extraction, uh, we just, whenever I have extracted a rule, judge can rule that in, if it includes some predicates, I want to make sure that all of, uh, all of its <coughs> core arguments are also uh, included in the same rule. So this is kind of uh, composing strategy to compose small judge can rules to larger ones, which include all the uh, semantic information. And uh, for source side rule extraction, we do similar thing. So now it is spent instead of uh, the, the fragment. So whenever I uh, include uh, a predicate in the span, I want to make sure that all of the core arguments are also included in the same rule. So here is one example. Um, so we can see that on the tree side, um, it, if the predicate uh, appeared in this fragment, I want to make sure that all of the core arguments like arg0 of arg and arg1 of this predicate is also uh, included in the same rule. And that's the same thing for source side. If it is, the character is a predicate, and uh, uh, if this predicate appears in this rule, I want to make sure that its core arguments like arg0 and arg1 are also included in this semantic rule. So we abstract away the internals, get this rule. So there are some previous work done in our group use, use the target side complete rule only. And here we use the source side and we combine the source side and the target side. And we here we make one small modification. So we can see that there is in this rule, arc zero, arc one, and the predicate, uh, arc zero and arc one, are still remained. Here we just get rid of this text, R0 and R1. And uh, to differentiate, we use a binary feature to differentiate these two. And uh, another kind of feature is we call a semantic role, semantic language model. So we just kind of use sequences of semantic roles as a language model engrams. So the intuition is to encourage the to make sure that uh, the semantic rows in our translation are in the right order when we do machine translation. And here, um, in the previous strategy, we do not deal with the uh, non-core rows. Now we deal with non-core rows also. So we try a trigram on annotated training data. So we define a new feature. We define new features that is handled just like regular language model. So this is our language model feature. Uh, so we keep a new field that is just a list of uh, semantic rows in the current span, all the rules. And uh, we also include all the, include a, a semantic row list for each known terminal. So here is one uh, example of uh, a deduction step. So here we see that the, when we rewrite A with B, C to space, so X1 is the uh, semantic rows in B, X2 is the semantic rows in C, and we also have some semantic rows for two space, that is destination. 
So when we, when we rewrite B and C, we also rewrite the uh, semantic row list. So we combine, rewrite B and C to get A, and we also concatenate the semantic row list to get our, to get our uh, list of semantic row labels for chart A. So as for experiments, we use a, a 250K Chinese English parallel corpus, and uh, we use uh, 392 sentences for development set and uh, 428 sentences for the test set. Uh, so we keep four re references for each sentence in the dev and test set. So <laughs> our decoder works with early parsing, and it is string to tree decoder. And uh, we train our weights using MERT. And uh, in order to make our uh, results more robust, we uh, run each experiment for 15 times. Uh, so the target size semantic row labeler is trained is a maxn labeler trained on section two to section twenty two on the pantry bank. For source size semantic row labeler, we use the labeler from Wu and Palmer. So here are some results. So we use to uh, to see if our uh, improvement is significant or not. We use p values. So p values are calculated using the bootstrapping. A uh, method for statistical statistical significance. Here we see that uh, so the baseline and the second line is uh, we do not we just include the source side complete semantic rule. We can see that the p value is less than 0 0.05. So it is significant if it is smaller than 0 0.05. So this is a significant improvement. And if we if we further combine it with target size semantic rules, then it is obviously significant. And we also do separate experiments. So this is separate. It does not include the first two uh, sets of rules. And uh, we can see that prop bank does not have significant improvement. But using more specific semantic rules from Verbnet improves significantly. So to conclude, uh, so source size meant to, uh, to use complete semantic row information uh, using source size semantic rules to improve the translation quality. And if we combine, uh, if translate with complete source size and target size semantic rules, that would further improve the blue score. And uh, I think the Verbnet in uh, out of prop bank because it has more specific semantic roles. And the uh, prop bank does not work that well because I think the index there, like 0, 1, that kind of order does not, is too general and it provides too few information for our translation. So here we just kind of, uh, this, this intuition is quite new. So we want to raise awareness of using such kind of semantic information into string to tree translation. I think this is very meaningful and there's a lot of future work. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Time for Thanks for this presentation. So, in many um, situations, there's uh, one constituent that is argument to several predicates in a sentence. This is quite common, at least in English and yeah. other languages. And since uh, your translation rules do model one predicate and all of its arguments, uh -huh. I'm wondering, um, in case where there's this sharing pattern, yeah. how, how does your model handle that? Um, so does it, do these rules need to assume that if uh, two predicates share one argument, when you translate, the same sharing pattern occurs, or you have a way of kind of uh, unrolling that maybe? So, so all the semantic, so after extraction of GHK rules separately, that is the baseline, we extract these uh, additional rules separately. So we extract these rules um, for each predicate. So whenever I found the predicate, 
I extract a separate rule for that predicate. If other predicates share the same arguments, so that is just for that predicate. So it is kind of differentiated between these two predicates. So that's not a problem if they two share. Yeah. And another comment is because uh, so because um, usually the predicates might have too many arguments. So that's why we want to differentiate between the core arguments and non-core arguments. So we don't want to make the rule too big. It is too difficult to generalize. Thanks. So um, thanks for the talk. This is a very interesting work, uh, however. I would like to ask for a clarification and also, yeah, some suggestion. So uh, the clarification, so we, th these rules that you are extracting, forcing that all the constituents, uh, so, so the trees, the, the, the side of the trees are uh, need to cover all the arguments for a given predicate. Is the, isn't it that it's uh, giving you very large yeah. tree structures? Uh, how do you deal with this and the sparsity of these, of these rules? Yeah, so I mean, uh, so that's why that's one concern for us to extract the complete rule with core arguments only. Mm -hmm. It does not consider the non core arguments. So, yeah, that is one concern, but that kind of situation is kind of rare because usually it's kind of uh, three or four, that kind of. So, these, these rules are useful, right? Mm -hmm. So, these rules will improve the translation quality. So. Because we still remain the standard JHCAM rules. So that, that part, this is just kind of additional rules to deal with the semantics. OK. Yeah. Uh, so this uh, links to the, the second observation is that uh, mm -hmm. so you propose here a model that takes into account the semantic model for translation, uh, yeah. but then the evaluation is only performed in terms of blue, which is uh, a, a, bit, a bit limited, <coughs> in my opinion. So have yeah. you performed any analysis of, of, of the output, trying to correlate uh, good results and bad results to the, to the semantic information? How reliable is the semantic information from the automatic semantic role labeling parsers? Also, maybe you, you would have the opportunity to evaluate these results using metrics for machine translation uh, evaluation that directly take into account semantic roles, like yeah. MENT from the KVU. So it's difficult because when, when we do such kind of, so we have to apply a semantic role labeler for the for pure English sentence, right? So we don't have enough annotated data for the pure string. Uh, yeah, so, so in fact this is, I think it is more meaningful if we can uh, use some strategy to really <laughs> compare it with the original method concerning the semantics rather than blue score. Yeah. So here. So if you keep working on this, I would suggest you to, to, to work on this, on this analysis step. Uh, and yeah. Okay. Uh, time for a last quick question. So if there are no more questions, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.